We're back again. I'm so glad you could join me. Today we're going to be mosaicing this chair. I've made the chair out of some polystyrene blocks, which you can see here. They're the under floor heating polystyrene. The chair was actually made from about three or four of these blocks. There's a great thing about polystyrene. It's completely compatible with all the cement products. So I got the polystyrene and I made a pad and then I cut two arms, cut one of these into a vague shape. I just use my bread knife. It makes a really big mess. There's white stuff everywhere, but you can bread knife any shape you want. So you don't need all the tools. Glued it together with this cement adhesive that I'm going to use to glue the tile onto the chair. Because the arms and the back could be quite prone, I then used some trick on wire before I skinned it with the mortar mix. And this was just to add some strength. Believe it or not, I did this 10 years ago and it's taken me this long. One of the other advantages is that I can sit here, just, a, just a, like a throne for one. In a certain times of year, I get the wisteria, I get all these other things that happen, and this is a unique view. My attempt here was to make it very sort of soft, and I, I really like the idea of the soft blue and the green. And I picked this out of this umbrella stand that was broken and given to me. The umbrella stand is cool because it's going to have the right shape of the arm. I'll get as much of that around as I can. And then the rest of it's going to be like a soft hue. It's almost like an ombre idea of the green and the blue. There's going to be minimal cutting. And the only thing I'm going to use, I'll show you, you don't need any tools particularly could do this all by hand. I'm going to do this very quickly. We'll go bang, bang, bang. Well, it's going to be even quicker because we're going to speed it up to show you after I after I finish talking and you'll see it. So one of the important things I always think to, to keep in mind is it has to be fit for purpose. And to be fit for purpose, it's really got to not give you a wet bum. I've made sure with my couple of large levels that this is sloping downwards. Here I've got a couple of broken pots I found in the garden and they're about the right curve and they'll be coming here. Also, another important thing is to, uh, you know, not get this too high here so that that stops the water and it pulls just behind here. So I want a continual slope and behind your knees is where you could catch and it could be uncomfortable. It's quite nice to have a really nice roll. Here we have a broken blue pot, which I really love. This blue pot's going to give me all of the slight curve that I'm going to need to keep the curve going. For the ombre sort of material, it's going to come down. All this material here was from another job. It's nice to use things. You can see I've got uh, numbers there. It was a big job and I just love the natural colors, but it's also, there's so much going on here. You really don't want anything that's really going to stand out. This is what I call my zip zap machine. It's, um, it will have a proper name. They're very cheap. I've got three sorts. This is what I'll be cutting. So you don't need a saw. You don't even need one of these very very simple you place that there's a slight ridge here you put your line on this ridge line here pull this over there and then you follow through and the pressure goes down on there and then you get your cut there so it's like scoring it's it's very simple the other thing I haven't shown you is that I had some of these left over from another job just to make it look a little bit like material I'm going to use these make it tidier but also look like a bit of upholstery. If you ever want to write on anything that's concrete, kids crayons. You see a couple of green lines here. The only other thing I've done just before I started the video was I've just hosed the whole thing. So it's important to feed this that's been sitting in the sun for 10 years, feed it with some water. Otherwise, when I put my concrete adhesive and mix it, it's going to just suck all the water out of it and it'll be a very dry and it won't be as strong a bond. I'll show you now how it mixed the concrete and then we'll get going. Right, so I'll don the gloves on, and here's the cement adhesive. It's a medium quality one. It doesn't have the flexibility of some of the others I use that are dearer because it doesn't require it. It's just quite straightforward. Yeah, it's just a matter of adding water. It takes quite a bit of water, this, and uh, we just mix it. I usually just mix this much at once and keep mixing other batches. If I, if I do mix too much, I tend to be pressurized into doing too much too quick. That's about the consistency you wanted. Very workable. It would probably be workable for two hours, although the sooner the better. You can do this any way you want. I mean, it's just like buttering. I'd probably want about that much. In theory, you should be doing it with this, but I'm just real hands on. Even though I've got the slope right, I'm gonna go thicker on the back and thinner as I get to the front, just to reinforce the fact that the water's gonna drain. Now, I already know that three of these are the perfect width. So I'll bang on three.
got to make some more stuff. Make a couple of cuts on that. Just take me a couple of minutes. Then this bit will be done. Right, so I've just made my cuts. Took very little time. We'll just pop them in now. Now because it's summer, we were actually going into autumn soon, I'm sweating, this is going to be very dry. What you're trying to do is slow down the rate of um, it drying out too quickly. This cloth is a non-scratch pad. I'm just going to throw some water on it. And here we go, we've got our little cuts in, as neat as we need to be. The slower you can get the concrete or any concrete product to cure, the slower the better, but the stronger the cement will be. Here we have it. Throw a bit of water on it. Don't forget to do that. Don't leave any concrete work that you're doing in the blazing sun. Right, so we finished the seat. Happy with that. Then I put these fingers here. I've gone with the flow. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it doesn't need to be. It just needs to be look like an old slumpy chair. Okay, so here we are again. I'm going to go through some of uh, the work I didn't show you me doing last night. It's actually had a good rain this morning, so it's rained on the job. That'll do it good. As I said about slowing down the curing of the concrete adhesive. I'll just show you where we got up to. We've got a few cuts here, which I couldn't just do real quick. I just want to explain to you my, my reasoning of the sequencing of doing things often. I also wanted to show you how soft the concrete adhesive is. I can't find my screwdriver. Right, so I found my screwdriver. I just want to explain to you that there's a working time with the concrete adhesive. You know, it's not a full day yet. I can still do this which is pretty handy, because tomorrow I won't be. It'll, that'll, that'll have set as hard as concrete tomorrow. Yeah, make sure you don't leave. It just saves your job later on. I also want to say that I went to quite a bit of trouble to get this line. I'm going all free and easy on this chair, but you know, right in your face and you, as you come towards it. I wanted a nice line here. And if I tried to make the nice line by cutting these out, or in this case, I'm gonna show you me just nibbling these pieces. These are my trusty old nippers and call them like nibblers. They're more concrete than, uh, than metal really now and I'm terrible with tools but I will put my glasses on you've got to look after your eyesight and as far as nibbling goes I went and did some cuts on the tile saw and I often can't be bothered going back into the shed and turning the saw on just get that there that'll fit in you do try not to um, lose your your edges which is why to fit this in I decided to trim it here not here because I would have definitely lost that sharp edge if I push these too hard and force some of these bits in these are going to move once they've moved i have to take the whole lot off if that one moves that one will move and the whole line will disintegrate this is not strong and completely set until another day so that, that's giving you about 48 hours till it goes hard what we're going to do today is do the curve we'll speed it up and you'll be able to see me do a nice edge here Back again and ready to do the arms. I've put a heap of sellotape to secure the pieces in my mind, just so I know what I'm going to use. I wanted to do an equal lot of the umbrella stand on there and there. I've got some small pieces here and whatever I can't manage to cover with the umbrella stand material, I follow through with, uh, I've got plenty more of that big pot and the pot will come underneath and there'll be a sort of line where it meets just here. I'm just going to do that. So we'll get, bring the soft blue in a sweeping motion underneath on both sides.
It's a new day and as you can see, we've completed the arm here and I've done a fair bit of grouting. The only bit of grouting I haven't done is, is here. I'm going to show you how to color the grout. I was going to do it gray and I decided I might as well do it green. It's easy enough to add the color. I'd like to give you the benefit of a couple of tips and tricks I've learned along the way and uh, hopefully will make it easier for you if you do decide to make one of these chairs. Just to review, the polystyrene in both of these enables this to be moved off site. Take these wherever you want. That is the beauty of the polystyrene substructure. The most important thing I could ever stress to anyone with doing a mosaic this large is to really have the time to clean off your residue, cement adhesive and grout. So if you did a really big lot of it, which you know really went for it all day, but you had to be away the next day, just make sure you've got time just to clean it off. There's an optimum time, and I would say with the cement adhesive, it's about, it's about half a day. If you leave it more than one day, you're going to have the difference between wiping off the residue with a paper towel to having to scrape it off with a Stanley knife blade. And you really don't need to make work for yourself. You know, my, my wrists and my elbows get sore these days, and it's so much easier to wipe off than scrape off. The other thing I could really mention is for you, your colder climates, like people in Canada, is make sure that you have the right tile that can withstand the freeze and thaw situation with tile. So the tile you pick and even the ceramics you might use, if you're in a cold climate and it freezes and then thaws, it expands and retracts and it will pop the glaze off. So you'll, you'll, you'll basically fail if you don't have the right tile. Now in the colder climates, you'll probably be selling uh, on purpose a glaze that can withstand that freezing thaw. We don't have to worry about it here, it's a much more temperate climate. Just a little tip I've got for you is what we call scum, which will happen on an exterior mosaic, it happens when the rain leaches out some scum from the cement adhesive and you'll notice it, uh, it, it may occur one to three times, it'll all be over. This is the situation here, that's not the grout color has shown it up but it's it, it's not grout on a lesser extent you can see it leaching through here this is only going to be removed from two things this is the clr we call it a lot of people use it for a lot of different reasons a lot of the time in bathrooms for the um, hard scale and the soap marks it should be available just about anywhere this will take off the scum save a lot of elbow grease you can do it two ways you can either do it with a blade or do it with this or do it with both just to show you It's not like anything else, the scum. It's hard to move off without using this. Very easy if you use the right stuff. And don't get disappointed if you see this sort of scummy thing. It always, of course, goes with gravity and becomes a drip line. It can be quite unsightly. Um, usually you've only got to clean it off once, but maximum three times. Um, I'll be over after it's all cured. The joy of mosaics is really there durability and their lack of maintenance. Once they're done, it does seem like a hard toil to get there, but when they're done, they're done. The very essence of the ceramic covering means it just dispels all dirt. Basically, when I have to touch this, this could look the same in 10 years. It's really wonderful. So now I'm gonna show you how to color your grout. I've just got some leftover grout from another job. This is off-white. Call it uh, gray, white, or off-white. Off it's all going to work just the same. It's about a third full from this takeaway container here. I'm going to use two heat teaspoons of the green oxide powder. Here we've got some other oxide powders. We've got, I suppose that's a dark red. We've got mm, russet, haven't used that one yet. And the marigold I haven't used, but uh, it could be fun. More green, we've got dark brown, which I use a lot of. And this is a darker red. The one I can't get, so it wasn't a decider factor on here, and I perhaps would have liked to have used it, is blue oxide powder to make blue grout. Couldn't get it in New Zealand, keep asking. They keep promising, never had it. One day, maybe. Now I'm going to put two heat teaspoons of this into here. And what will happen is it won't look green. This is why I want to show you the process of doing it. It'll just disappear into the white grout and you think you haven't put enough in, but you have. So this is just a bit of water. Now I've started with that much water. I think that's definitely going to be enough. If you have too much, it's a bit like icing a cake. You can get the icing and keep adding water and it just becomes a big mess. Basically works at the very end and it doesn't seem to be working for ages. So you could keep adding water, but don't. So in will that go. Again, it won't seem white. It won't seem to be green for ages. 
mix it in and seemingly nothing will happen. And if you're not sure how much water, just put less water than I used and just add it slowly. And the only real way of mixing this is to get your hand in and start squeezing it. And again, it seems dry. You, you can't even see where the water is, but it's coming up green now. And again, don't add water because it's already got enough. Now it's starting. Best way to mix it, I find, is just force it through your fingers. Save a lot of time. I wouldn't mix more than this because it won't last in the bowl more than 20 minutes. Half an hour max. So you really want to not pressurize yourself and just, just make, 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 mix up, say this amount, good, good amount, good consistency. The other thing is you're probably on, on the size gap that I've got on this chair, you're probably going to need to do another pass. So try and get like 80% of it off the first, but you'll, you'll have a couple of touch-ups. You'll miss some bits and you need to just fill them up just to level it off. So you'll never get it in one go. Do it in two goes and you'll be fine. Twenty minutes now, ready to wipe this off. Now you will hear about people using a like a ringed out sponge to take grout off. Uh, that I think is, is more the wet way. This is the dry way. I don't like smearing green all over it and putting up with the mess everywhere. That's just a personal preference. You take it out wherever you want. It's been twenty minutes. It's going to, in theory, glide off the glazed surfaces and. It'll leave the glazed surface and stay where you need it. There is always a little touch up. You always miss a little bit, but um, when you are grouting it, so I will do another pass, but it'll be very, very quick. These are much bigger gaps than I would use, normally use, but it's in your own garden. I did it very quickly and very organically and enjoyed the, uh, the process. There we have it, one piece of kitchen towel and some dirty hands. Come on, Frankie. Oh my God, this is so good. So good to finish your job. Come on, sit down. Good boy, no licky face. Probably use the coffee table more as a footrest. Oh, can you sit down better? There you go, get your ear right. So if you have any questions at all, please just ask away. I'm, I'm good at questions and if you like the video, I would love you to press the like button and the subscribe button. It will really help encourage me to keep making content and grow my YouTube channel. This is the fun part. This is sitting down and enjoying. It should last for centuries, but I won't.